Welcome to The Actor's Choice, where the actors and actresses have a chance to talk about themselves and their careers. Join us now for the next hour as we explore the marvelous industry of acting by actors and actresses from today's exciting show business world. And now, direct from Hollywood, here's your host, Ron Brewington. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Brewington, and welcome to The Actor's Choice. Roll it, Tony. Sometimes will still walk up to me and say, hey, aren't you the little boy in Candyman? I was like, yeah, that was me. I was Jake. <laughs> well, I'm the one guy, and I played Jake, the one who gave the tour of the uh, of Cabrini. Ladies and gentlemen. My first guest today got started in this business when he was only eight years old. You just saw him. And since those days, he's had a busy acting career with lead roles in major motion pictures, television programs, and commercials. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Quan Guy. How you doing? Man. How are you? How's everything? I'm, everything is well. How you doing today? Man, I had to catch myself because I have a grandson's name is Dequan and you're Dequan, so I got to be real careful about that. Yeah. Man, I'm here. Greetings and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Actors' Choice. Now, reading your bio was very, very interesting. Uh, I noticed that you moved to a few cities, but can you tell us where you were born first? Then I was born in Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio. There's a picture of it. Yes, beautiful city. A lot of things going on there. And then you moved someplace else. You came to uh, Los Angeles. Yes, then I moved to Los Angeles. Right. And there's Los Angeles. Yes. <laughs> And then oh, you, you moved. In the video. I'm not seeing the video. <laughs> oh, okay. You're not seeing it. And then you moved one more again. You moved to Atlanta, GA. Atlanta, right. That's where you're currently at. So you do get around. You do get around. Okay. Uh, this is a redundant question, the one. Uh, and that is, and I always ask this what made you get into acting, sir? What made me get into acting. Mm -hmm. My earliest memory is of myself and my aunt, Irene Crawford, who did a lot of my acting training with me over the years because she graduated you know, from college with a degree in theater and all of that. But uh, my earliest memory as a child was doing scenes uh, at uh, Improv of the Cosby Show. And I'd be Bud coming over to see Rudy uh, on the Cosby Show. And, and we would do these uh, uh, improv scenes in my grandmother's kitchen. So it kind of started, you know, at my earliest memory. And then later, you know, I did little acting classes for kids in Dayton. And then next thing you know, I'm visiting California. I'm visiting my aunt in Los Angeles. And I start going to Marley Gibbs Crossroads, who uh, Marley Gibbs and Whitman Mayo own together. And during which that time, um, going, that's, that's how about career got started. Because during going to Marley Gibbs Crossroads, uh, I attended a class for the adults um, and participated in a scene playing Travis and Raven Raisin in the Sun. And John Singleton was sitting in that class. He was, um, I say, posing as a student, but he was a student in that class. And his production office was in the same building for boys. I see a the picture of him right now. There's a picture of him. John, 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 John Singleton, indeed. Right. Uh, he was in pre-production for Boys in the Hood. Yes. And, and was interested in me to be the young Trey in that film at the time. Mm -hmm. But I was eight. I looked like I was six. <laughs> I was very young looking. And with the, the language and everything, and it being his first film, and I didn't have any prior experience, uh, it just, it didn't work out for that role. But he wanted me in the film anyway. So uh, he had me sent for to fly from Dayton, Ohio to Los Angeles to do one line in the movie that got cut from the film. But that's where my break started. And that's where, you know, my mom and my aunt and people saw, well, maybe he might have a, a possible good career here, you know. And uh, my mom let me go back out to California you know, the following summer. And I stayed longer, and I ended up booking Candyman. 
Yes. Candyman. Oh, yeah. That was a great little movie. You had a lot of fun. You had a role called Jake. Yes, I was Jake. They mm -hmm. called me Take Jake because uh, one day we were shooting a scene in the bathroom scene and uh, they got what they needed in one take. And they called me One Take Jake. <laughs> I had lots of fun working on that movie, yeah. Yes. Sometimes one take is good. Sometimes one take is not so good. But hey, right. you get it done. Amen. Uh, there were a lot of other people that helped you out in the early days. Gregory Hines was one of them. Lawrence Fishburne was another. Other people came around you. What did you get out of that in meeting those guys? Um, well, uh, it was great. I actually uh, worked with, I auditioned with uh, Lawrence Fishburne for Boys in the Hood. And I worked with Gregory Hines on Cherokee Kid. And wow, he, he was something else. He, he really was. Uh, he definitely was a positive figure to be around. And um, I remember asking him about tap dancing. And he was saying, go to Savion Glover because he was like the prodigy there. Um, and uh, he, he was a great person to work with, you know. Who are some other actors that you admire? Uh, Will Smith. Uh, he was uh, really great to work. I worked with him on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, one of the nicest people I ever worked with. Um, Tia and Tamara, uh, Maori now, you know, Harden and they changed, I can't remember the other last name, but they're both married now. But uh, working on Sister Sister with them, they were very nice people to work with. Um, I got to work with David Hasselhoff on Babe Watch. He was very nice to work with, you know. Um, I had a great time, so I had some great experiences there. He took me on a ride in his Porsche. I remember to the set one day because I wanted to ride in this Porsche. <laughs> Always been really in the car. So, uh, you know, a Cherokee kid, I got to ride a horse. You know, <laughs> it, uh, I've had some fun experiences. You know, even if I wasn't riding a horse in the movie, they let me ride one on set. It was cool. So, yeah. What kind of roles do you look for? Uh, roles that I can relate to. <laughs> um roles that um have something of substance and you know maybe there's going to be a message talk in mm -hmm. that from that character or lessons learned that i think are, are valuable in life mm -hmm. uh, i do like dramatic roles I, I worked on a show called boston public and i played the character jt and he struggled with jealousy um uh of his girlfriend at the time. She was playing in a play and she had another boyfriend in the play and he was jealous of that. And he was working with that. And I was younger when I was playing that and I thought, oh yeah, this this teaches something here, you know, because it, it dealt with domestic violence and all of that. And then um, the same character earlier uh, in the previous season to that one, um, they, the N-word, we dealt with the use of that and why is it acceptable or not acceptable and the use of it. Uh, Come on. Uh, there, was scene, there was a scene where my myself, my character JT, had a Caucasian friend and he was using the word and it caused the fight in the class because somebody else, you know, another Black student was like, no, you can't be saying that. <laughs> What's up with and, and, and next thing you know, we're fighting. Next thing you know, they're buying a book about the word and uh, the class is studying it. So I thought that was, um, JT had a lot of different um, lessons to be learned with that role and, and with the, sh the shows, the episodes that he was a part of that character. Okay, let's fast forward to the year 2001. And you did a movie called Baby Boy. You had a Baby role there? Baby boy, would John yeah. sing? Yes. That was, that was very, um, a lot of fun working on that set. Uh, I actually found out about the, the casting of Baby Boy from a neighbor of mine when I was living in Los Angeles. He said they're uh -huh. doing, he said they're doing Boys in the Hood too. <laughs> you know, nobody knew what it was, mm -hmm. I guess, at the time, or he didn't know. He said, but they're casting over there in Lamert Park. You need to go over there. So I just went over there and asked to see John. And, and when they told me he wasn't there, I told the uh, lady, I said, well, isn't that his car in the parking lot? I was bluffing. I had no clue if that was his car or not. 
I was bluffing. I just figured it was the nicest car, but it wasn't too flashy. It was like a Lexus SUV. And I was like, you know what? He has kids. <laughs> it's, this is his office. That's the nicest vehicle in the parking lot. Let me just throw that out there. And it was all like fly off the handle. And she said, well, let me go get him. And then she went and got John. He came down and he was like, what's up, Dewan? It's good to see you and all that. You know what? I want him to read for Jody. Now, we know Tyrese ended up playing Jody, but that's what I originally auditioned for uh, for Baby Boy. It was for Jody. Yeah. You mentioned auditions, something that you have to do in this business. What's your thought about yeah. it? Oh, uh, you just you got to do it and um, prepare for it. And once you're prepared, relax and just have fun because, and, and don't worry about whether you're going to get the role or not, or, you know, don't concern yourself that to that because then that are, attract the wrong kind of energy on it. You know, yes. uh, I, I would say just, you know, prepare, study, you know, um, develop your character, do what you have to do, do your homework. Yes. And then once you do your homework, just let it fly and, and, and forget about it. And you hear something, you hear something, you don't, on to the next audition. Okay. You know? Good advice. People should listen to it. Because a lot of folks want to get into this business and some of them uh, listen, some won't listen. They, they, I'm a star, you know. <laughs> right, right. Right. No, no. The years was 2002 through 2003. You did a TV series you mentioned a few moments ago, uh, Boston, Boston Public. Yes, Boston Public, right. That, what, 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 what do you remember especially about that movie? Well, uh, that, that show, um, I, what I remember is I actually auditioned for Boston Public a few times mm -hmm. before I got the role of JT. And then once I got JT and then mm -hmm. we did, did the initial episode, uh, they brought me back and kept me as the same character and I became recurring. And they, uh, it was another episode uh, the lesson was about gambling and um, deal with, um, you know, underage gambling at the high school. And, and we were dealing with that. And then uh, as the same character, then I, I later became Tamira Gray's uh, boyfriend uh, on the show. She was, uh, came and was guest starring. And uh, I was the same character, but playing her boyfriend. And uh, that's when we dealt with the domestic violence and everything, because I actually slapped her on the show. Yeah, so it was um, it was pretty intense. And let it be known, I think the slap they they used, she was uh, she got in a little too close. We had rehearsed and rehearsed it, and we had did it a few times, uh, ran it, and I wanted to take to actually slap her on accident and. That's they, the director was like, keep it rolling. Don't, don't, don't cut it. Keep it rolling. <laughs> it was real. And I was like, oh. <laughs> See what you did? I was like, I'm going to tell everybody on Crenshaw, you just slap to my brain. I said, no, don't do it. <laughs> I felt so bad. But everybody was good about it. Tamar was, was cool. Everybody was good. They knew it was an accident. And it, it had a really good result on camera because her reaction was real and, gotcha. you know. Everything was so real because you really got hit. No. <laughs> right. yeah. We just happened to have a clip of that movie, Roller Donnie. Oh. Hey. Hey. Hey, these are for you. Oh, I see it. Okay. You want to see me? Yeah. I am. Um, we need to talk. first met, we swore to each other that we'd never be like our parents. I'd never drink. That wasn't the girl that slept that you slept, was it? Uh -huh. Ooh, pretty girl, pretty girl. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, right before that happened. Yes. Okay. I see that the latest action comedy that you're doing, right now, the latest job you got, is a movie called Dirty Cops in L.A. Yes. Dirty Cops LA. Uh, LA. I shot that out in LA. It was a great project to work on. Uh, really funny. Came out uh, last year and um, had a lot of fun working on that project. I was, I was like a, a, a youth counselor, uh, kind of uh, you know advocating, trying to keep guys from mm -hmm. being locked up. If they if they could be saved, I was trying to save them. 
from being locked up. And then the movie was about, it's kind of like uh, bad boys meets dirty cops. <laughs> but, <laughs> Dirty, so they're like they're crooked cops, but it's a comedy. Yes, uh, it's a really funny movie. I uh, definitely suggest people take a look out. Yes. All right. Now I noticed one thing that you I found something about you I thought was very nice. I see that you have a it's called the Quan the one guy the host. Mm. Roll it, Tony. Welcome to SAE Radio, and what is your purpose and why are you here with Dewan Guy? Today on that show, we have Jihad. He's headed to the fourth term. Jihad, everybody knows Jihad. He walks around campus, you know, kind of tall guy with a baseball cap on his head. Ever so fresh, so clean, and so cool. Always having something new to say about the latest and the greatest on the hot charts, on the music list, whether it's pop, whether it's rap. I don't care what it is. He got his word on it. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, is yeah. this a, re a regular thing for you or some things that you're doing? Uh, it was something that I was doing at the time. Uh, and then I uh, I have my own little shows that I would host and gotcha. have different topics. And I think at that point I was in school um, and interviewing one of my classmates. Hmm. Interesting. I call it STD, something to do. <laughs> yeah, something to do, yeah. I, 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 like, I like hosting. I like hosting and asking questions and doing what you do right now. Yes. It's, it's, fun, it's fun for me, you know. Okay. One more quick question. You live in Atlanta. Do you have any connections already with Tyler Perry? Not yet, but I'm hoping uh, to get those connections. And, uh, you know, I've been auditioning and uh, looking. I got my, my managers working real hard for me, so, you know. So hopefully he gets me plugged in and, and I, I'll get an audition with Tyler for something. It's, it's bound to happen any day, you know? Brother Rowe. <laughs> Brother Rowe. Yes. I want to thank you very much for stopping by today. We really appreciate your time. Come on back again and continue success with your career. I know the family is very proud of you. Very proud. All right. Thank oh, you. My pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Actors' Choice. I'm your host, Ron Brewington. We'd like to let you know that we are asking the Actors Choice Squad to help us get former baseball player Kurt Flood into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Now, Kurt, who passed away January 20th, 1997, was the husband of one of our wonderful guests, renowned actress Judy Pace. All we ask you to do is go to our telephone. Please contact us at 213-349-3941. That's 213-3941. We sincerely thank each and every one of you for being a part of this magnificent award for a great baseball player. Roll it, Tony. Mr. I am appealing to your sense of God and family. I got a message my daughter, who I have not seen in 22 years. He's in there. The event will be letting out soon. After 22 years, what's another couple hours, right? Okay, buddy. There's got to be a... Uh broom closet around here somewhere, huh? I'm sure we could work something out. I didn't take 34 years to come out of the closet just to go back into one. Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest today is a veteran actor who has been on the television, motion picture, and of course, the stage. He's also an educator and acting coach who works with children and professionals and helps them evaluate their skills for performances and auditions through workshops, master classes, and private coaching. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jeff Sumner. Jeff, glad to have Hi. you. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you, Ron? No, you're looking good, man. It's good to see you. We talked on the phone. I saw a picture of you, and now I'm seeing you, you and I. I know. I feel like we have this relationship already. Indeed, indeed, indeed. <laughs> Welcome to the Actors Choice. And before we get started, would you please tell our audience where are you from? Sure. Well, originally or where I am right now? Uh, originally. Where you from originally? Sure. Well, originally I'm from Skokie, Illinois, which Skokie. is right outside of Chicago. Yes, that's a picture. You know Skokie? I've, I've been there. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's where I'm from. And then uh, after that, then I, after I graduated from college in Southern Illinois, then I moved to New York. I lived in New York for about five and a half years, and I've been in L.A. Uh, since 1991. Wow. Now, you did have a chance to get some education, what I call it, education and training to be an actor. Tell us where that was. Where'd you, where'd you do that at? Sure. Well, you know, I, I always knew I wanted to be an actor from a young age, and um, I wound up going to Illinois Wesleyan University in Bloomington, Illinois. 
great school. Um, and it was, um, you know, they were just developing their music theater program there, their musical theater program. And that's really what I wanted to do. Um, and so I went there and uh, got some great training. And then after I graduated, then I moved to New York and I studied pretty vigorously in New York. I studied at uh, Gately Pool Acting Studio. I studied Meisner Technique and went through that program, studied voice with Liz Kaplan, and then studied dance at Theater Dance, which was a, uh, back when I was there in the, in the 80s. Sorry to date myself. Um, it was, uh, it, that was one of the great, great places to study. You see what, what you talk about when you talk about your, ed, I call it education because I'm a professor at a school out here in LA. But people don't understand. We see a lot of people who watch this show and they're in the business, but they think, well, because I look good, you know, and I, I talk well, I'm going to get a job. No. You said Meisner training, one of eight, as you know, one of eight te different techniques. You learn something. That's what you have to learn. Yeah, know. you have to learn something. And you know what it does is it puts the tools in your back pocket yes. so that you have it there when you need it. When you're on set, you have to be able to utilize those, those tools. <laughs> Excuse me, when you're in front of an audience, you have to be able to use, utilize those tools. And I think that a lot of people growing up in the age of TikTok and American Idol who want to become stars just like that because of, you know, I, I want to be on TV, you know, um, I think the longevity of a career like that is very limited because you really don't know what you're doing. And um, when you are on set and you're working at, you know, a pretty high level, you need to know what you're doing. And it is a craft, it is, it's an art form. So when I'm, as an educator, because I, I work with kids and I work with adults as well, you know, I, I'm very, very big on not only knowing the tools and the art of the, the craft, whether it's acting, singing, and dancing, but I'm also very, very, um, very in tune with learning the history of why you are allowed to do what you're doing now because somebody paved the way for you, you know? When you came here, to, when you first came to Hollywood, what was your first reaction? To LA? To LA. I was, uh, so, well, I lived in New York for about five and a half years and I was like, you know, kind of this struggling actor who kind of saw himself as this leading man. I was way too young. I was way, way too young. And I came to LA, uh, thinking, oh, wow. Yeah. You know, New York actors coming to LA, they're going to, I'm going to get a sitcom at the airport. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Um, so it was a little bit of a, sh a little bit of a shock. Yeah. Um, you know, because it's very, very different. New York and LA are so completely different. New York comes in on you and LA is, everything's out. And that's everything, career, <laughs> everything. So it was a little bit of a shock to me, but I love the weather. And I was like, I, it took me a couple of years, but then I was like, yeah, this is my home now. Gotcha. Now between your acting gigs, you got a part-time job selling Tupperware and you created uh -huh. a character called Pam Tastic. Yes. Oh, that's uh, so that was a big detour in my career. You know, uh, one of the great things about acting, and this is this is something that I, I also like to talk about, is that, you know, just because you need to take a break from acting and do a little self-care and make some money, that's OK. <laughs> you still are an actor. And um, and so what happened was, is that I was driving this terrible Honda Civic wagon that was falling apart with no insurance. And um, I was on the, you know, gay ready to declare bankruptcy. So a friend of mine went to a Tupperware party and he said, Jeff, you can make a lot of money in selling Tupperware. And I was like, oh my God, great. <laughs> so I went and I talked to this Tupperware lady and she says to me, Jeff, I think you'd be fantastic doing what I do in Tupperware. So I went to a Tupperware sales meeting just kind of as a joke. And I saw all these Tupperware ladies there that were all singing, I've got that Tupper feeling deep in my heart. I thought it was like a cult. And so I, I decided if I'm going to do this, I'm going to create theater out of the classic Tupperware party and make it like this ever-changing musical experience done in people's homes. Mm -hmm. And I created this character and decided to become a Tupperware lady myself. And I became, I the character's name was Pam Teflon. Mm -hmm. And then later I had to change it to Pam Tastic because uh, DuPont was going to sue me for using the name Teflon. <laughs> and I became the number one Tupperware salesperson in the United States and Canada and also the Tupperware lady to the stars. It's all going in my book. See that book, indeed. <laughs> 1998, you got your first IMDb for a role in a film called Pure uh, Killjoy. But then in 2007, ah, now we come to the good stuff. 
Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention because that guy that you see on that screen here, he's done a lot. Here we go. Then in 2007, you got a role in the Disney production, Aladdin, a musical spectacular, where for more than eight years, eight years, you became the best known to Southern California audiences as a hilarious genie. Yeah, that was, uh, that came out of nowhere. The show had been running for about, I think, six years, five or six years at that point. And uh, my agent had called me at the time. He said, Jeff, they're looking for understudies for the genie in Disney's Aladdin and Musical Spectacular. Right. I had never seen the show. I didn't know what it was. I went in and I auditioned. And then they had me do all my impressions and all. I mean, it was it was grueling. It was it was tough. Actually, a little funny story. When I went into audition, Daniel Solis, the casting director, he, he had me do all these impressions. I did it one, two, three, four. And he goes, Jeff, that was great. But do you do any men? because <laughs> i was doing liza and joan rivers and so so anyway i got the gig and i wound up coming in as a call-in which is kind of like a um you know swing and then eventually i uh i came on full time and i wound up doing the show for about eight and a half years and it was truly one of the best experiences i have ever had in my life it used every every tool that i had in my skill set and uh yeah, and it created a lot of joyous memories for me. We closed in uh, 2016, I believe. 16, right. Mm -hmm. Here's a picture of the marquee. They have a nice little picture. We, we have it. Ah, there it is, the yeah. Hyperion. That oh, was yeah. us, the Hyperion Theater. Yeah, yes. it was a beautiful, it's a gorgeous 2,000-seat theater. Yes. Uh, yes. After we closed Frozen, the show Frozen moved in there. And then now, uh, now I'm not sure what they're doing in there. I think it's like a, uh, like a chicken place or something like that. I'm not sure what they did with it. Okay. Now, we got a video to show you. Here you are as the genie. Roll it, Tiny. Here's genie! Kid. You have got no idea what it's like to be trapped inside of a tiny little lamb for the last 10,000 years, 22 hours and 53 seconds. Wow. Wow, that was beautiful. And then I found another picture. This one you'll love. Tony, can you put that one up, please? For the last, it's the next to last day before you actually close the show. Yeah. Yeah. God, it was such a it was such a beautiful production. Mm -hmm. It had such you know it's so funny because that was one of those shows when people came to Disneyland. You know they're coming for the rides and they're mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. But what they didn't expect was that they were going to see this amazing forty five to fifty minutes when I did it because I improvised quite a bit. Uh, a fifty minute Broadway show. It was a thirty six million dollar show that they would see, and it was this kind of little crown jewel that uh, was in Disney California Adventure. Wow. Indeed. I see we're running a little tight on time. I want to make sure we get this in because that's why you're here today. Let's talk about the new play you're doing right now. It's at the yes. International City Theater in Long Beach. It's yes. called uh, The Legend of Georgia McBride. Yes, it is. It? It's fantastic. We just had we just had two tech rehearsals and I've got a drag hangover run. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's um so basically what it is, it's a great show. It's got so much heart. It's uh it's it's just beautiful. It's um it's basically it's about this young man named Casey who's a bartender in a Florida bar mm -hmm. who's an Elvis impersonator and his Elvis act is not bringing in the money into the bar. So the the bar uh, the guy who owns the bar decides he is going to bring in his cousin who is a drag artist with his friend played by me. I play uh, Miss Tracy Mills, the drag queen, and is going to help the business but ultimately what happens is is that tracy's partner she falls and has an accident because she's got a little alcohol problem um and so what what my character does then is has to train this elvis impersonator how to become a drag queen and craziness ensues it is it is somewhere in between a play and a musical it's one of these crazy shows where in the middle of it there's this huge drag performance that happens yeah. and uh i you know i have 12 different outfits and in 10 different wigs and uh yeah it's been a lot of fun i've gotten to you know i, I, I tend to play lots of drag roles too in my career um and uh and this is really one of the great joys of it 
Tony, can you show photo number one, please? There you are. There. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, you just got that. Yeah, that's good. That's <laughs> very good. That's looking, my opening outfit. Yes, we call it looking G-double-O-D. Looking good. Right. Looking good. Next one. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Looking a good cast. We got a lot yeah, of it's a fantastic there. cast. Really great, really great, great talented people. Yeah, in that picture, just quickly, is uh, Tom Trudgeon. Uh, you also have Donzel Lewis. I'm in the center there. And then we also have uh, um, our Taubert and Andalini plays Casey. And then uh, Carice Frizzell plays Joe. Got a great good cast. Got a good crew. Uh, one more picture to show you. There you are. There you are. There <laughs> you are. <laughs> there you I, are. I look like I'm in Sunset Boulevard, don't I? <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeff. OK. Quickly, a sun, you gave us a little synopsis of it. Okay, the play opens up June the 10th with previews on June the 8th. And yes. you give, what, a three-week run? Yeah, we're going to close on the 26th. Uh -huh. um, our shows are Thursday, Friday, Saturday at 8 p.m., Sunday at 2 p.m. Uh, tickets are thir like between 37 and 55 bucks. There's also like a dinner and a show thing that you can get together. Um, and then for tickets, you can go to ictlongbeach.org. That's ictlongbeach.org, and uh, you can order tickets. And I really hope people will come and see the show because it's so joyful and uh, has such a great message. It's all about inclusivity. It's about mentorship, about teaching. Um, it's got a lot of really wonderful themes in it that I think are, it's really going to resonate with people. It's got a lot of heart. And it's got Jeff Sumner in it. And it's got me. <laughs> Doing good, doing good. Jeff, I wish you continued success in what you're doing. Thank you Thank very, you, very Ron. much for being with us. I'm sure we learned a lot about what being an, an actor is and continued success in your career. Our dear, dear friend, Lucy Pollock, we're gonna thank her and McBride for the photos. They did it, they got them to us real quick so we were able to show the audience what you look like. Thank Fantastic. you. Thank you. You have a great attitude, sir. Continue. Thank you, career. Ron. Much luck to you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this is the Actors' Choice. I'm Ron Brewington. Roll it, Tony. Back in the day when I was in grade school, I'd shoot marbles at recess. And see, the way you carry your marbles was in a little bag. You know, plastic, nylon, whatever. Now one day, this kid comes at me and he rips my bag open. They fly everywhere, free marbles. I got real upset, told the kid off. He felt real bad. Even apologized, said he'd never do it. Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest today is also a veteran actor, having more than 61 IMDb TV and film credits and a whole bunch of plays. To show what he does, he's got two spells right now in pre-production, a short film in post-production, and he's just completed a film called Smoke Screen. The man is busy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what can I say? Looks very good. I'm seeing what he's adjusting right now. Looking good. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Daryl Phillip. Greetings, Daryl. Welcome to the Actors' Choice. It's good to be with you, Ron. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Wouldn't have it no other thing. Two things we want to start before we begin. One is, I want to thank you so much, sir, for being available here today. Ladies and gentlemen, we had a scheduled guest. This happens sometimes. People have to do other things and can't be in both places at the same time. And we called upon Daryl. And he was kind enough to give us the... He's here now. That's all I got to say. So thank again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Second, please tell us where you're from, sir. I was born and raised in Odessa, Texas. Uh huh. Uh huh. And um, that's where I grew up loving the theater. Of course, in Odessa, Texas, there wasn't that much uh, going on as, as in, the, in the way of show business. I did every church play I could find, I did every <laughs> school play I could find, I did every community theater play I could find. I worked at the TV station there in town. I did all I could just because I loved it. I made my babysitters watch uh, performances that I created with my little brother, and uh, they were kind enough to listen and sit there and watch it. Here's a question. What made the acting bug bite you? Well, it shows me. I didn't choose it. I just I always <laughs> wanted to be a performer. I remember walking into a theater when I was a little kid and it, I felt like I was walking into the Notre Dame Cathedral. I felt like it was a spiritual place, a holy place to be. And I still feel that way. Excellent. How about education for you to get to this level that you're at right now? Can you tell our listeners that? I started out studying there where I lived in school and the community mm -hmm. theater. Then I went to college 
And I came out here when I was very young and to LA and I studied with every acting coach I can find. I studied at the Groundlings. Uh, I studied with uh, Larry Moss, Ivana Chubbuck, um, and recently with Ben Guillory at the Roby Theater Company. And I, I, you, get, you gain so much knowledge from each person. They're all so different. Let's go back a few years. What was your first stage play? My first stage play, I had one scene and then I was murdered. It was called <laughs> J.B. I was a 10-year-old little boy named Jonathan. It was based on the story of Job from the Bible. It was our community theater, J.B. And I had one scene and I was killed right after that. And that seemed to be a, a running theme with my career. You know, actors, when they get trained, one of the things I love is that they, they get trained on how to die. <laughs> so here right. is, here's your chance to either put your hand over your heart and just fall forward or something, something like that. You know exactly what to do. <laughs> oh, yes, sir, you've done a variety of plays. What kind of plays do you look for? It sounds cliche, but I love good parts, well-written parts. And I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, this this describes my career in a nutshell. When I first got out to Hollywood, you would have to go pick up this magazine called Backstage yes. to find out the auditions. And it came out on Wednesday night. You'd go through it and, and you'd mail in your black and white headshot in a manila folder about this big. It was 50 cents. And you had to mail those in every Thursday. And then maybe they would call you later on. Maybe they wouldn't. Well, I remember I was looking through the through the breakdowns and I saw it was called the Jesus Project and it was what would it be like if Jesus would came today in modern times and I was 33 at the time I thought oh my gosh and it said right on the envelope the part you want to audition for and so I went through all this Jesus the disciples all these people I thought well I need to play Jesus I'm 33 I want to play Jesus I should be Jesus I'd be perfect for Jesus so I wrote Jesus in big black marks a lot letters on the front of my manila envelope i mail it in i thought this is going to work a few days later i get a phone call that's how they reach they would call you leave a message on your answering machine that you had to call and listen to on tape and a woman answered she said she called me and she said hi this is heather from the jesus project we'd like you to come in and audition for the part of satan i said okay i get it i get it Let's put it this way. Let me throw three words at you because you like plays. You ready for this one? Okay. Cyrano de Bergerac. That was tough. <laughs> that was tough. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. Oh, you did that was, one. You did that one. Mm, mm, mm. That was about the man who was ugly. Right. And he had a huge nose. Right. And he was in love with Roxanne. But his best friend was Christian, who was very good looking. But Christian couldn't speak to women. He was very shy, couldn't speak. But Cyrano could speak. He could make a poetry uh, just off the cuff. And so Cyrano would hide in the bushes and Christian would go up and try to talk to Roxanne on the balcony and Cyrano would whisper out what to say. And so Roxanne fell in love with Cyrano, mm -hmm. the personality of Cyrano. She fell in love with the looks of Christian. And then uh, at the, well, I won't tell you the end, but her last line is, I lost the only man I ever loved twice. You know, you've been around some very doggone good writers and directors too. Yes. You ever thought about being a director? I've done it. It's mm -hmm. hard work. Yes, yes. You have to be there every second. With an actor, you just go in when you need it and you leave and go home or go out mm -hmm. to the alley and have a smoke or a drink. But the, act, the director has to be there every second. Yes. And he's responsible for everything and he has to watch everything and make sure everything is going correctly. Mm. 1988, you did a you did a movie called Vampire at Midnight. Yes, I did. <laughs> that was my first break into Your Hollywood. Face, right. <laughs> uh, you, if you blink, you miss me. I was in the I was in the nightclub scene in the dark. Yeah. But I put that on IMDB. <laughs> 2014, you did another movie called The Algerian. That was my big break because <laughs> I was doing a play at the Roby Theater Company uh -huh. and um, they needed some, Harry Lennox uh, was helping to produce this movie and he needed yes. somebody. The actor called in the day before and said, I'm not going to do this for whatever reason. Right. So they called me. I was working with Ben Guillory at the time 
and they called and asked Ben if he knew of anybody. So Ben recommended me. And so I got the part of this guy uh, who was a drunk. And I was perfect for that role. And um, he was a drunk and he was, he was kind of uh, bigoted. And so I loved it. Those are the kind of characters I play. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the next thing I want to ask is a, how I met this gentleman. He was in a play on Memorial, this past Memorial Day. The play was called The 101 Club. Can you tell us about what that was all about, please? The 101 Club uh, was a, uh, written by Judith Bowman and Melvin Ishmael Johnson. I've worked with both of them before from the Roby Theater Company. And it was about the Tuskegee Airmen and the, the, uh, the prejudice that they faced in, in the military. And of course, I played the person who was heaping ill will on them and prejudice on them. Uh, it was a great, it was a very well written piece and uh, we had a good time with great actors. I had a great time doing it and it's always, it's always nice to entertain and inspire at the same time. You hope, hopefully you inspire. I don't like to be preached at or lectured, but hopefully if we're entertaining and we do a good job then maybe they'll be inspired at the same time. We just happen to have a clip. Roll it, Tony. Yes, sir. That's right, over 100 of them. I'm sorry, sir. I, I agree, sir, that the original orders were inact, inexact and ambiguous as to its meaning and purpose. Yes, sir. The legal team, Roger that. Uh, three of them are still locked up. I have their names right here. Thompson, Terry, and... Uh, in that scene, you're talking to the general and trying to make us, as it turned out, there was a mutiny uh, at Freeman Field where, where, where this uh, actually took, active, took, actually took place at. And uh, it, uh, uh, I've got a lot of, uh, I'm a Tus Tuskegee historian. And just to be around and to see what happened to that and to see what people are doing right now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see this play that you just they got it right now available on YouTube. And guess what? It's free. Just go on up there and type in the words, the 101 Club, and uh, I'm sorry, 101 Club 5-30-22, and you can get a chance to see Daryl and a whole bunch of other good folks out there doing a great job out there. Again, thank you very, very much for that. Uh, uh, what happened? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to play for a minute there. Uh, it was a great opportunity for all you guys. I know that uh, we're going to get some more members of the play on this show so they can talk about not only themselves, but what they went into that, into that play, the effort that went into it, indeed. What current plays, other than this one now that you've got out of this one, what current plays are you doing now? I know you're going to New York City with Eartha Kitt. Yes, I'm headed to New York tomorrow to perform Janelle Randall in Eartha Kitt, I Want to Be Bad. It's going to be at the Amos Musical Theater at 555 <laughs> West 42nd Street on June 13th at 7 p.m. And uh, Janelle plays Eartha Kitt. She sings live. We have a live band. And she embodies the spirit of Eartha Kitt. I play all her husbands. How many did she have? Oh, I can't even count. No, actually, <laughs> I think she only had one. She only had one husband and a lot of boyfriends. Mm -hmm. And she, I think she dated everybody that was alive in Hollywood at the time. Oh, wow. But it's, it's a great play, and Janelle is wonderful. And I'm, I'm very proud to be doing that. We'll be doing that for one show only. It's kind of a trial to see how we do. Wow. Hopefully they'll invite us back. And then we're also performing at the... Um, the Black Theater Festival in Winston-Salem in August. And um, so I'm really happy to be a part of that. It's a great okay. show. I hope you have fun in New York City. That's my home. I was born and raised in Harlem. So I love, I love it. it. I love it. Yeah. Get my pretzels, get my hot dogs, you know, got to do that. And you got to go on 42nd Street and go to Broadway and see those magnificent plays that are there. That's yes, all I, I hope so. Do. Indeed. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's so much, so much. What advice would you give? Because you've been in, you got what, over, over almost 70 uh, acting credits. What advice would you give to people who want to get into this business? Well, I once heard a woman give an advice to young actress who, thought, who asked her what she should do to yes. get into the business. And she yes. said, find something else to do. And I don't agree with that. <laughs> I don't agree with that at all. Uh, I, I say, be yourself. Uh, go with your instincts. Uh, and if you love it, it's hard work. There's a lot of rejection, obviously. 
no yeah. matter who you are. Uh, but pursue it. Uh, do what you can in your own area, bloom where you're planted, and and go with the opportunities you have nearby, and, and just try to work as much as you can, mm -hmm. and anything that you can. It's a good project, and 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 find out what kind of type you are, what what you are best at, uh, and what you and it's usually what you enjoy. When you read a script, which character do you identify with, or do you enjoy? Uh, with me, it was when I was a little kid. All the other little boys wanted to be. Uh, uh, a cowboy or an astronaut, and I wanted to be Dracula. I don't know what that means about me. That just explains the kind of roles I was I was geared toward. But in, you know, I'm not that great of an actor. I, the, the, my dirty little secret is I'm not that good. I just love it, and I work hard at it, and I have a love for it. How much of you do you put into when you're doing a role of yourself? Well, that's that's a tough question. I think you have to pull something from inside you that identifies with mm -hmm. the, the situation you're in and react to the situation the way you would react. Yes. And, and don't try to go outside yourself and pull something you don't, you don't understand or you have no experience with. Uh, I noticed that you do a lot of short stories and TV series. I noticed that. Any special yes. reason? Well, it pays the bills. And <laughs> Here's yes. a little spoiler. If you're ever watching one of those uh, true crime documentaries on <laughs> Discovery ID, if I'm in it, I hate to break this to you, but I'm probably the killer yes. most of the time. Wow. You you wear a lot of hats. Uh, you know, when you're out there doing your job, what are these? how do you do all these jobs at one time? I mean, from the top, we were talking about the fact that you have two in post, two in post one in completed. You got a lot of stuff going right now. Plus, you're doing that play. You got this one coming. How do you do? How do you keep up with all that? I, I love it, and I'm just trying to accept it while it's being offered. I'm just trying to receive my blessings, and, and I'm very thankful for everything that's offered to me that's a good quality project. Right. And because uh, I know sometimes, as you and I had a conversation, uh, in this job that I do that so well, I love it, is the fact that I see a lot of actors and actresses who don't want to get up on the stage, and I sometimes say, why? Why don't you want to get on the stage? Yeah, it's it's hard because you're there with the audience in the same yes. room, breathing the same air with the audience, and that's oh, what makes yes. it exciting. You have if, if the if your pants fall off or if the wall falls on you, have to <laughs> you have to keep going. You have to figure it out somewhere and, and solve the problem. Uh, but that's what's exciting about it. And that's you have that electricity in the air, and you have that relationship with the audience, and that's what we love as actors. When you're on a set, you get there in the morning, you're excited, but by the time ten o'clock that night rolls around, you. You've lost interest. You just want to go home. <laughs> hey. Tony Awards coming up this week. What do you think? Well, uh, it looks like MJ is up there with a lot of nominations. Maybe mm -hmm. that's going to do it. I hope to be there. I'm going to try to break break in, uh, <laughs> bust my way into the theater and watch. First time you walked on Broadway, how did it feel? Well, like I said before, it feels it feels like a, a holy place, a holy ground to me. I love the theater and and being there, rubbing shoulders with those actors, and knowing that they're actually there. It's not just a flick, flicker on the screen. It's they're really there. Yes. that's exciting to me. Wow, I mean that statue of the of the Catholic priest that sits on right on Broadway there, and the birds sit on his head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's Broadway. It, oh, only on Broadway. Daryl, thank you very, very much for taking the time and for being here. We bless you very much for thanking you and being here. Um, please come back again. I will, Ron. Thank you for having me. It's good to meet you. I want to thank our sponsors, Harvey Brandman's Photography as an Art, Ron Irwin's Lose Life, The Way to Lose Weight, Larry Buford's Books of the Future, Time Travel, Message in the Capsule, State Farm agent Carla Green, and veteran actor Rob Brownstein's Acting Training School and Actors Space. And much, much thanks to our guests today, actor Dr. Guan Guy, actor Jeff Sumner, and actor Daryl Phillip. And of course, special thanks to our ever, ever, ever-growing audience. Be well. We'll see you next time. Take care.